so we've used a variety of libraries uh, for uh, for coding this uh, some of them are numpy pandas um, seaborn xgboost sklearn metrics etc <coughs> so um, a variety of uh, features are involved in this data so we have uh, around 569 instances and uh, 33 features describing each of these instances um, so some of these features are mentioned here uh, and I have described some of them one of them is ID number so this is one of the unique features which identifies every patient uh, the diagnosis is the target variable or the target feature which will conclude if the ta uh, which is a conclusion if the tumor is malignant or benign uh, we have 10 real valued fe uh, features which are computed for each cell nucleus which is the radius texture parameter area smoothness compactness con concavity etc and for each of these we have calculated the mean standard error worst and largest uh, and we have compared their images, computed and compared these images for uh, which have resulted in 30 features. Now, um, in our data set that we have taken up, there are no missing values and all the data set or the entire data set is complete. So, the class distribution says that there are 30, 357 uh, benign tumors and 212 malignant tumors. Uh, and these are some of the gra these are some of the uh, plots that which describe the frequency. So the blue one represents the benign tu uh, the benign tumors, and the orange one represents the malignant tumors. And uh, here we have also mentioned the code that we have used uh, to get the following output. Now to mention the next following steps of the pre-processing of data, we have Monica. Here I will discuss the pre-processing of data. First of all. I'd like to uh, discuss about visualization. Uh, we'd visualize the data uh, in order to get important insights about it. Um, so here are the pair plots for uh, the attributes. Here I'll start with the pre-processing of data. So uh, first of all is visualization. Um, visualize, uh, visualization uh, gives important insights about the data. Uh, firstly, uh, this is the visual representation of data using histograms. So these are the histograms for each of the attribute which gives the frequency of the attribute values in the data. Second is box plots for the attributes. It is used to visualize the distribution of values of attributes and to see the outliers. As an example, uh, we have plotted box plots for few of the attributes, so you can see this in the diagram. Radius worst, texture worst, perimeter worst, and so on. Next is the swarm plot. So these are the swarm plots for each of the attribute. Here we can see the variance clearly. The blue dots uh, represent the malignant ones and the green dots represent the benign ones. Now, uh, the next pre-processing step is mapping string to numeric data. So in this case, uh, the feature diagnosis has values in the form of string, which is mapped to numeric form for analysis. The mapping function is the uh, value benign B is mapped to 0 and uh, malignant M is mapped to 1. Next pre-processing step is uh, identifying the missing values and dealing with them. The data contains no missing values in this case for any of the attributes as inferred from the figure below. So we don't have to deal with them. The next pre-processing step uh, is to identify duplicate data and deal with them. 
Uh, this data contains no duplicate instances of patient data, so uh, we have no need to deal with. Now, uh, there is feature subset selection. Uh, in this, uh, we'd like to uh, select the features which are relevant to the classification problem. So the feature ID is a unique attribute for each uh, patient in this case and it is irrelevant the, to the process of classification. So it can be easily el eliminated. So we drop the features ID and unnamed 32. The resultant columns in the data can be seen as below in the diagram. Next is dimensionality uh, reduction. Uh, in this, the features which are highly correlated, so that means uh, show dependency with the target variable, are highly uh, relevant for our classification problem. So we can remove irrelevant attributes in order to reduce the size of data for easier computation. Here, uh, Y stores the target or class variable and X stores the non-class attributes. The irrelevant attributes can be found by computing the correlation among non-class attributes and then we can reduce a subset of highly correlevant non-class attributes to a single or less number of attributes which would uh, reduce the size of data. So for this, we create a heat map to display the correlation between all the features so this is the heat map and uh, the, it shows the values of correlation coefficient uh, uh, between each uh, pair of attributes. It ranges from uh, minus 1 to 1. So uh, the heat plot visualizes the correlation between each pair of attributes as I stated. And uh, we can select those attributes which have high correlation with each other according to a threshold that we set and then we can implement the classification algorithm with a reduced set of attributes. So we take the threshold value to be 0.9. From the heat plot we infer that the following features are the most related with correlation greater than 9 and uh, these are radius mean, parameter mean, area mean radius worst and perimeter worst. Now we plot the scatter plots for all the high correlation features with respect to the target feature. So in this we can see which uh, feature, non-class feature, uh, uh, affects the target feature. The one which is highly correlated to it. Splitting of data into test and train sets. The data that we have has not been uh, divided into test and train sets, but to be able to evaluate how well our algorithm is performing, we need to use some testing data. We need to reserve some testing data which we have used using this test train split function, wherein 40% of the whole data has been uh, set aside for training purpose. This graph, this plot, is a pair plot. It shows the relation between uh, five different features of uh, the data and how they are uh, and, uh, plotting the dots on them and how they are related to one another. For the training of model and the predicting of target variable, we are using XGBoost or Extreme Gradient Boosting. It is a library designed and optimized for boosted tree algorithms. Its main goal is to push the extreme of the computational limits of machine to provide a scalable, portable and accurate uh, large scale tree boosting. It has several features like speed, input type, dense matrix, sparse matrix, data file, D matrix, sparsity, customization, etc. Gradient boosting involves three elements. 
a loss function to be optimized, a weak learner to make predictions, and an additive model to make uh, to add weak learners to minimize the loss function. Basically, it's an ensemble technique wherein weak learners uh, are used to predict a uh, higher accuracy of the uh, target variable. Here we have imported XGBoost as XGB and uh, the classifier has been loaded into model all. Model all is considering all the features of the training uh, set and uh, it is training uh, on X and then checking whether the results are correct or not uh, using the X test using the predict uh, method we are storing it in a pred uh, named variable after analyzing the predictions we find that uh, it has a high accuracy of 0 0.95 and uh, we then print some uh, evaluation matrices like pre re um, precision recall f1 score support and we get these results as visible on the screen using classification report method next we use confusion matrix um, which is showing us the true positive true negative false positive and the false negatives hence we get the accuracy of 0 0.9517 from here, Saloni Chauhan will continue. Thank you. Next, we will be finding the optimal features. And for this, we will be using RFECV. Here, as you can see, this is a code for that. And uh, the result came that the optimal number of features is 11. And these are the features that are optimal. So. Then we made a graph against the number of features selected and the cross validation score. As we can see, this is the highest cross valid validation score and it is for the number of features 11. So then we rank these features, all the features according to their importance. This is the code for that and then we plot those importances and we choose the top 11 features after we choose the top 11 features we train the model for that we are using xgb classifier after training the model and uh, analyzing the model we see that the accuracy of the model this time is 0 0.9649 which is greater than which is greater than this okay, which is greater than the model where all the features were considered so now I will talk a little about why we chose this algorithm uh, so one of the advantages is that we do not have to uh, derive uh, we do not have to derive a new boosting algorithm for each loss function and uh, also the regression trees are used that output real values for splits and uh, after calculating the loss to perform the gradient descent we must add a tree to the model and also xgboost manages only numeric vectors and as we have seen our data set contains mostly numeric values and uh, xgboost can also scale with hundreds of workers and these are the four enhancements to the basic gradient boosting so in conclusion this is the summary of what we have done so first we uh, did the exploratory data analysis and then we checked for missing values and duplicates and after that we plotted the data and we uh, analyzed it some more and then we dropped the features that we thought were irrelevant and then we found the uh, most optimal 11 features and then we trained the data again and we could see that the accuracy of the model increased from 95.17% to 96.49% and also the number of features was decreased so that helps in scaling. So that's it. Thank you sir for your guidance and for listening to us. Good evening.